Albert Einstein was once reported to have said that if the bead disappeared off the face of the earth, man would only have four years left to live. Now, although this quote may, may have never been said by Einstein, the impact of the quote and the severity of the situation can, can be currently seen in the status quo. Bees are the world's most prominent pollinators. The United States Department of Agriculture attributes over 130 different fruits and vegetables that are cross-pollinated by bees. And without the help of honeybees and wild bees, the diversity that we see in our ecosystems and on, and on our dinner plates will have suffered greatly. In only one year, bees make up over $40 billion worth of agriculture and are primary pollinator of major fruits and vegetables like soybeans, apples, oranges, and a, a majority of flora and fauna that we see, see across our earth today. Without bees, not only would our food supply decline, but the, economic, the environmental diversity that we so enjoy, the quality of the air, and our overall lives will be grossly affected. Unfortunately, the friendly face that we see in the honeybee is facing a major problem, and that is of the colony collapse disorder. Colony collapse disorder started in 2006, and since that year, we have seen a 30% decline in global bee populations, with a decrease of 40% in the bee population every single year since. Now, this has been attributed to a myriad of reasons, like the varroa mite, and a parasite that infects a bee and destroys their immune system. Similarly, it has been attributed to the lack of gene genetic biodiversity that we are seeing within bee colonies due to the artificial insemination of bee queens. Environmental stressors, medical stressors, and political stressors have, have also all been attributed to the rise of CCD. However, there are two major causes that we see here today that we believe are the, the true cause of CCD. And that is the use of pesticides like neonicotinoids and the, the commercial migratory beekeeping practices. The reason why we, we think these are the two major issues causing CCD, despite um, dissent by the scientific community, is because neonicotinoids were passed, the neonicotinoids were legalized by the EPA in 2003 and widely popularized in 2005, only a year before the demise of the bee population in 2006. Similarly, although the, although the migratory beekeeping practices have been in, in um, in practice since the early 20th century, we have seen a rise in this practice due to competition from China in terms of their synthetic honey and just the, ge the general decline of income for, for beekeepers. Whereas varroa mites, a lack of genetic diversity, and environmental stressors have all been issues for bees for the past three decades, and we have not seen a significant causation in terms of CCD when linked to varroa mites and environmental stressors. Rather, we see, we see that these extraneous problems actually lead to the weakening of bees' immune systems, which makes them less susceptible, more susceptible to things like pesticides, like neonicotinoids, and the harming effects of migratory beekeeping practices like, like those be currently being employed across the U.S. and Europe. The pesticide category of neonicotinoids poses one of the greatest threats to the bee population, as can be seen through a Harvard study in 2012, which found that the beehive mortality rate when exposed to neonicotinoids is around 94%. Uh, neonicotinoids were approved by the EPA in 2003, and, and since then have become implemented across the globe in areas such as America, Europe, and Australia um, by corporations such as Monsanto and Bayer. Uh, what happens when bees are exposed to neonicotinoids is that the dust becomes attached to their bodies and is eventually absorbed. Uh, there are two major side effects to neonicotinoids for bees, one of them being that they have um, seizure-like symptoms where they spasm completely or they can become completely paralyzed. Both of these symptoms are more often than not fatal for the bees. And um, one of the major problems with neonicotinoids for the bee population is that when this dust latches onto a bee, it often gets carried back to the hive where it can further infect other members of the bee population. This is where we get the statistic of 94% of bee mortality rate when exposed to neonicotinoids. So as you can see, neonicotinoids are posing a major threat to the bee population and are something that needs to be um, remedied. So in dealing with the problem of neonicotinoids in the context of colony collapse disorder of bee populations, we believe that we must first look at it from an economic aspect, from the economic aspect. So through taxes and subsidies, we think that we will be able to largely cut down on the use of neonicotinoids within farms and other agricultural facilities that are using bees and uh, other migratory beekeeping services for pollinating their crops. So uh, by establishing a tax on the use of these neonicotinoid pesticides, 
we believe that we'll be able to successfully disincentivize the use of these pesticides and other similar chemicals uh, within the, the farming of such crops as soybeans and other fruits and vegetables um, in which neonicotinoids are currently being largely used. Uh, furthermore, we believe that subsidizing the use of other safer pesticides and chemicals uh, in place of neonicotinoids is another way we will be able to achieve such disincentivization. So um, we hope to do this in a plan guided by the United Nations Environmental Program in conjunction with various local governing bodies so, um, so as to form economic plans suited and tailored to each individual nation and uh, locality in which we're going to be implementing these types of plans. So for instance, uh, the average agricultural production of a, of a farm in, say, the United States in the Midwest is definitely going to be much higher than that of a farm in uh, Brazil or Panama. So uh, we believe that, similarly, the plans that we're implementing should be scaled to suit the necessary needs of those uh, particular farms. So our second proposed plan for dealing with neonicotinoid use in uh, farming facilities is to promote the development of new technologies that will make neonicotinoid pesticides uh, obsolete. So um, HV1A slash GNA is a, a pesticide that was developed fairly recently which incorporates spider venom as a means of making the pesticide more, uh, more efficient. So uh, this is something that has been proven to be not only safe to bee populations, but just as effective um, as a pesticide as the neonicotinoids and other chemicals that we've been using up so far. So we feel that by incentivizing the development of these and in turn incentivizing their use within farming facilities, we will be able to largely cut down on the use of neonicotinoids in, farming, in the farming industry. So we propose that to host a, a world summit of innovators and world leaders within the fields of agriculture to uh, think about how we're going to go about the development of these new technologies, how we're going to implement them, and by what means we're going to achieve the level of incentivization necessary to stop the world, the global agricultural industry's use of neonicotinoid pesticides. Our third proposal for dealing with the use of neonicotinoids is encouraging international action against their use. So firstly, we'd like to ask for international pressure on uh, large companies such as Bayer, Monsanto, and Dow Chemical, which are currently producing neonicotinoids, and to encourage those companies to stop or limit their production of these chemicals. Secondly, we'd like to push nations to work towards legislation against the use of neonicotinoids, such as legislation currently proposed in the EU. And finally, we'd like to promote nations, we'd like to push nations to develop safe guidelines for the use of, uh, of pesticides within their own nations. So uh, guidelines specifically tailored for their own environments and geography, such as uh, currently in the U.S., we're working on guidelines that are promoting farmers to only use neonicotinoid pesticides if they have to in the non-blooming season, because uh, during the blooming season, that's when the bees, bee pollination occurs. So we feel that these types of regulations and guidelines will allow on a global scale for us to limit the exposure of bees and bee populations to neonicotinoid pesticides. This increased exposure of the bee issue on the global platform will increase awareness of the bee issue to a level that we feel is suitable to the direness of the situation. The other main cause that we have deduced to the recent rise of colony collapse disorder within bee populations is the uprise in the practice of migratory beekeeping for commercial pollination services. So migratory beekeeping involves the packaging of large numbers of bee colonies onto the backs of trucks for transport over long distances uh, in order to commercially pollinate uh, agricultural fields. The mingling of bees between the hives increases the transmission of pathogens during these journeys. So uh, as I said, the transportation of bees itself causes large numbers of colony death. So about 10% to 30% of losses are common as a result of moving colonies for pollination. Migratory beekeepers then split their hives into less numerically sustainable colonies in order to compensate for these losses. These splits often change the natural age structure of the colonies, which is itself a further colony stressor. During long distance colony moves, hives may be kept in staging apiaries, where hundreds of hives are placed in very close vicinity to each other. Often there's not enough food within the flight ranges of the foragers, and hive robbing is common, leading to further disease transmission. Hives then become weakened despite the efforts of beekeepers to provide extra food for their colonies. So along with the, the stressors that, have, that occur within bee colonies just due to transportation, 
the practice of migratory beekeeping further exposes the colonies of bees to large fields of agricultural crops that are using the new nicotinoid pesticides that we've uh, previously discussed. So migratory beekeeping has been around since 1907, but uh, only since only in the recent decade, with the rise of new nicotinoid pesticides, have we seen the effect of colony collapse disorder within bees. So we feel that cutting down on migratory beekeeping uh, as a practice commonly engaged in by honey keep by uh, by honey beekeepers will be a good way to fight the effect of the pesticides on bee colonies. The other main reason that we've seen a rise in the practice of migratory beekeeping in commercial pollination services is that uh, starting in about 2006, there's been a large increase in imports of Chinese synthetic honey, which is itself not a, not a true product of bees, but rather comprised of corn syrup and other chemicals. So these are being shipped by the barrel into countries where beekeepers often rely on honey as their main source of income. And uh, as a result, they can't compete with the prices of the Chinese honey so they must engage in migratory beekeeping. So this is something that we feel if we can solve, will largely cut down on the issue of colony collapse disorder. Although migratory beekeeping has been in industry for over a century, the practice has spiked in the last decade. This is due to Chinese synthetic honey. Chinese synthetic honey has flooded the marketplaces, causing prices to plummet worldwide. No longer can beekeepers make a living selling honey. They've had to resort to migratory beekeeping. In order to dis discourage this use, we've come up with guidelines for usage. Our first guideline is that we would like beekeeper unions to set out regulations saying beekeepers can no longer rent their bees to farms using neonicotinoids. Additionally, in order to limit bees' contact with neonicotinoids, we'd like to propose an automated pollinating system. Harvard has already invested a significant financial sum in order to research this and develop a product called the RoboBee. This RoboBee with us will offer global distribu distribution to local governments who will be able to supplement pollination with this robo-bee. It is clear that bees are not only an important but an integral part of the global economy and environment as a whole. However, within the past decade, along with the rise of the use of neonicotinoid pesticides and migratory beekeeping practices for pollination services, we've seen an aggregate effect on the global bee populations of a general weakening of their immune systems and bodies to a point at which they're susceptible to varroa mites and other pathogens. We believe that these two main issues are the causes of colony collapse disorder, and through the variety of solutions that we've presented, we'll be able to help bring an end to this terrible tragedy.